actually genuinely so excited. I know the theme is a bit more vague this time. We're looking for innovation. The ideas that have come out of the last evening. I'm pretty sure you're going to be knocked your, your socks off. So, before we begin, if you're streaming live tonight and you just stumbled on this live and you are wondering what Launch Namibia or who Launch Namibia is, Launch Namibia is a three-year-old company that is made up of two branches, namely Launch Media and Launch Namibia. So Launch Media is our graphic and media hub, which does everything from branding, printing, signage, anything that you can think of branding, we can cover you. And Launch Namibia, which brings you pitch night this evening, is an entity, an entity that looks at decreasing the divide between startups and entrepreneurs and private and public institutions that can push these entrepreneurs and their businesses forward. So one of our ventures under Launch Namibia is Pitch Night, whereby we invite a cohort of entrepreneurs to come and pitch their business concept and the best gladiator of the evening would then win a startup hamper. So this, e this evening, due to COVID, our previous and current evening's pitch night is what we would call a jumbo concept. So normally we would have three pitches and only one winner. This evening, we have a larger cohort of six finalists and two eventual winners. So isn't that exciting? So you know that there's space for two of, of, of our finalists to win this evening, right? Okay, so without further ado, I did mention that I have an esteemed panel of judges in front of me here this evening. So I would like to welcome you and thank you so much for availing yourself tonight at this pitch night. Can I just have then a short introduction of all of our judges, starting with Gerald Dreher. Camera, are we good? Awesome. Are we good on sound? Okay, just a moment. There we go. Gerald? Can you hear me? Okay. There you go. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Gerald Dreyer, and uh, I'm a junior technical advisor at Startup Namibia, where we really aim to help startups in their formation and growth. And um, yeah, my role is really focused on monitoring and evaluation and IT support, and I'm really excited to be here um, at the launch pitch night. Thank you so much, Gerald. Moving on to our second lovely judge of the evening, Tanya Stroh. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, and to all our viewers at home, my name is Tanya Stroh. I am the founder and creative director of Turi Pamwe. It's a communication design agency, and we specialize in working with responsible brands to help them amplify their communication and the impact of their work. And I remember when I used to be on the stage pitching my own ideas. So I am a, an entrepreneur. Um, I'm in the 10th year of my own employment. So I know what Can it means to- Can we put our hands to together <laughs> for Tanya? <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I know what it means to start a business in the Namibian context, especially the creative industries and the design industries, which I'm really passionate about. And I think innovation is an interesting space. So I'm super excited to hear um, what our pitches will be about tonight. Thank you so much, Tanya. And moving on to our last and not least judge, Estefe Kamos. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Estef. I am the economic attaché uh, at the Embassy of France. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Launch Namibia and UNDP Accelerator Lab for hosting us tonight and making this uh, event possible. So thank you very much. Um, and what I explained a bit earlier, um, France is also committed into empowering startups and uh, that's also why I'm very honored that you have uh, thought of uh, me and uh, my organization to be here tonight. So all the best for all the participants and uh, I look forward to hearing um, the plans for tonight. Excellent, thank you so much. Can we give our esteemed panel of judges a round of applause? Thank you so much for availing yourself. Um, now I think we're gonna get right into it. I mean, we came here for a reason. We know why we're all gathered here. I think the pitches themselves are ready. They've been going through grueling um, sessions with themselves. They had a dry run session where they hashed all of their fears out, all of the hiccups. And I think they're ready to pitch for you guys tonight. Are we ready for them? Okay, awesome. 
So our first pitcher of the evening will be Miss Netumbo Nuyoma pitching Tetranology Mobility. Can we put our hands together for Netumbo? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to our esteemed judges. My name is Natumba Nyoma, the Manager for Public Relations and Communications of Tetranology Mobility. Our team is made up of Mr. David Mbudi, who is the founder and manager of Tetranology under Innovation and Business Development, as well as Abiyata Angula, who is the co-founder and director for Retail and Commercial. Tetranology Mobility is a startup Namibian company that encourages and promotes clean mobility and car-free alternatives. One of our goals of Tetranology Mobility is that to promote safety road to promote safety to promote safety measures for road users, creating a visibility in such a sense that our helmet comes with a LED panel visibility, as well as to create, innovate and design a product that would be one to be seen on by one of our clients. One of our goals is also in line with the UN Global Goals that falls under the sustain sustainability development, which is that states creating a sustainable community and cities. And without further ado, I would like to introduce to you a very first Namibian product born and created by Namibians, the Helmetric Band. The Helmetric Band represents an actionable meaning of reliable on mobility pro by providing cycle helmets, MTV helmets and urban helmets as well as other accessories. We would also be creating protective gear focusing on safety, performance and our distinct, and our distinct measure would be providing safety uh, safety measurements for mo micro mobility users. Now most of you people would probably be wondering why would we come up with such a product. First of all, the, prob the problem that we came to arise with was due to a largely densely, popu densely populated cities around the world that experience higher congestion that would also lead to accidents, thus making us become aware that there's been a rising number of micro mobility users around the world even though it has been reported that 78% of the users, cyclists and motorbike riders, do not use helmets, thus that would lead to head and, head and neck injuries. Therefore, we came up with a solution of creating, designing and innovating a hybrid helmetric helmet that has a LED panel at the back of the helmet, which is used during night visibility, that can also be programmed with backlighting model signals that, are, that come attached to the cycle's handle or a motorbike handle. So such a signal controller means that on the helmet itself, let me just, on the helmet itself, you see that that is the LED lightning. This, li this panel will always be lightning during night for night visibility. And on the sides of that helmet and on the sides of that lightning, they will be coming controlling signals that will be, indicate, that will be showing as indicators whether the cyclist will be turning left or right, just to make it aware for the vehicle drivers behind the cyclist. Another thing, that, another thing that we've considered with our helmet is by collaborating with a business known as Busby App. Busby App is an app that detects accidents through an application source, which I'll explain later. The reason why we came up with collaboration of the Busby app is because of we've realized that there have been accidents where our cyclists and motorbike riders have not been safe. Motor vehicle riders, motor vehicle, mo people who drive motor vehicles would either bump one of, the, one of the cyclists and then leave them on the road stranded. Thus, we decided to use the Busby app to co collaborate with our uh, helmet. Moving on to the unique selling point. Our unique selling point that makes us distinctive and different from our competitors is that we have visibility in the dark, also known as behold the light in the dark. We have quick snap on straps. This is a trademark created by Namibians for Namibians and it is also known as air ambition as well as vents with extra powerful inlets, also known as air ambition, excuse me, pardon, the quick snap on strap comes under a U-Track system that is a trademark created by Namibians. And of course, we're not only selling a product, but we're also selling safety. 
That is a product demo showing, illustrating how the helmet will be shining, will be reflecting during night in, in the evening for night visibility. And then moving on to our business model. Now, basically, our business model is commemorate is accompanied with four components, such as key partners. The key partners would be our helmet manufacturers. We've made contacts and are considering to finally um, make partnerships with uh, Aurora Sports LTD, which is a helmet manufacturing company, world-renowned, as well as... Okay, and then I would move on to what brings value to our product. By providing cyclists with a helmet that ensures safety by combining headlight, taillight and sound signals to other vehicle drivers. Our industry analysis shows that over a population of 7 billion people, only 3 billion 893 people are micro-mobility users. And out of these people, only 766 million 200,000 are helmet users. But we've also recorded as estimate that new users at an amount of 443,000 would consider using helmets. Lastly, our SWOT analysis shows that in our strengths, launching the first ever helmet to feature integrated LEDs with turn signals made by Namibians would be a turning point for Namibia. Moving on to our marketing strategy, our overall marketing objective would be increasing our market share by 15% with the first year penetration. That's meaning that in order for a Namibian to purchase one of our products, they'll be gaining 50% discount on our, on, on our products. And then for international... I'm, I'm so sorry to be the bad guy, but <laughs> time, time has lapsed. So I think if there's any um, gaps in her presentation, the judges can just feel free to ask questions. This is your, your time with the, the picture. Uh, we can start with Gerald. Um, Hi, Natumbu. Uh, thank you for your presentation. You. I just had one question. Um, what's the cost of producing a helmet like that or manufacturing one? And how much do you charge your customers for it? Okay, so basically we estimated an uh, amount that it would cost us 1,300. Uh, it would, our selling price would be 1,250 for our Namibian um, clients. But then if you have a Busby app, which is in collaboration with our helmet, you would get a 50% discount. And then for the international cli clients, they would get a 10% discount. And in our first year of production, we plan on selling and producing 10,000 units, which would give us a total sale of 12,409,500 Namibian dollars. Okay, moving on to Tanya. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. I'd love to hear about your international market access. Um, as we know, Namibia is a small country. I, I can't imagine what the number of bicycle users are here. And I think they, they're really mostly for exercise, not really for commuting. So if I was based in another part of the world, why would I choose, well, how would I have access to a helmet that comes from Namibia? And why would I choose a helmet from a country that I perhaps don't know about? Okay, well, one of the, well, one of the reasons why we partnered up with, is it on? Okay. Well, one of the reasons why we partnered up with our manufacturer known as Aurora Sports LTD, this is an American-based manufacturer. They are known for producing either, they are known for producing one of the best um, helmets such as Lexa Luma. And as, and as a benefit, we, we realized that people are always comfortable working with something that they're already known with. So working with Aurora manufacturers made it easier for us to penetrate our product into the market, as well as by having our product um, showcased on eBay and Amazon, and whereby also on Busby, whereby you can see uh, alternatives and new ideas and also launches and get extremely good discount prices on our product. Um, hello, well, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I had a question regarding competition. Uh, how would you prevent uh, other companies or competitors to use uh, the same technology to put a LED uh, at the back of a helmet? Uh, like what prevents them from doing it and how, what's your thought about this on, on this competition? 
Well, I'll be specific when, with one of the competitors that we've made research upon. We've realized that they also have an LD panel light on their helmet, but the only difference is our helmet is rechargeable. Our helmet works with a connector signal. This signal, you attach it to your bicycle handle or your motorbike, whereby you can switch it on to indicate to your road users behind you whether you're turning left or right. And the other thing is, since it comes and this is connected by Bluetooth, most of, the other, most of our competitors only have motorcycles that have a LED light li lighting for night visibility, whereby ours, you can use it to indicate, to, to prove, to, uh, to show people where you would be indicating and turning. And the other thing is, we've connected with Busby. How Busby works is that, it is the thing is, you'll need to download this app onto your phone, and then as you go cycling, you have your phone connected to uh, the internet connectivity. Busby does this, if they detect a sensory on your phone that your phone has either crashed or fall, they'll send you an alert. And then within this alert, you need, you will, you're given a time to respond within 30 seconds. If no response is received by the cyclist, an alert is sent to your emergency contacts. You are allowed to have more than one emergency contacts with the Busby app. Therefore, they will, locate your, they will locate the person and send an alert to one of your emergency contacts so that they can come and save you if you've probably been in an accident. That is one of our distinctive differences between our competitors. Wow, I just, I just feel like I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> Can we put our hands together to, for Netumbo Neoma for an excellent presentation? Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Netumbo. Yo, every time we have pitch night, I just listen to these people's presentations and I realize how well-versed and how passionate somebody is about their product. And not just the fact that they're trying to make money or trying to make a living for themselves, but the fact that they're trying to solve a problem. So our next pitcher, whose business concept is education-based, will be pitching Namibia Open College of Contemporary Skills. Can we please put our hands together for Eben Haihambo? Say something, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's working? Okay, cool. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eben Hayahambo, and I'm here tonight to present to you the future of education. Uh, the, 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 facts are, the facts are bleak. Uh, up to 12,000 Namibian students uh, were denied funding by the NASFAF last year, and as a result, they couldn't access tertiary education. And this is a cycle every year. There's always people who can't afford it. As a, as a result, the option is no longer available to, for them. Uh, and uh, as per the East report of 2017, up to 20% of employees uh, were found to be not having the necessary skills required to, to do the job they were hired for. And uh, generally, uh, the, 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 the quality of education in Namibia is quite low, uh, as evidenced by the education index of 0 0.52 for the last five years. Uh, it, it should definitely be better. Things should definitely be better than that. Uh, so the problems are that education is expensive, it's static, it's, it's not dynamic, it's not moving, uh, it's not relevant to the needs of the industry, and it's not flexible, uh, bringing the overall quality of education in Namibia quite low right now. And that's why we introduced to you the Namibian Open College of Contemporary Skills. The Namibian Open College of Contemporary Skills is a, a sharing economy-based online university which aims to make higher education and skills development more affordable, convenient, and, uh, and, and, and accessible. Uh, it's done with the mission of bringing together educators, educational institutions, uh, uh, students who are the educated, and the industry players. To, bring to, get, to come together and collaborate on course content that enhances the standard of education in Namibia and hopefully the rest of the world moving on. Uh, the courses are divided into three different types. Uh, the first type is credit eligible courses, which will be delivered in, in, in partnership with uh, accredited institutions. Uh, and then the industry certified courses, which will be sourced directly from the industry players. So it means that they bridge the gap between education and employment. And then the last batch is the skills based courses, which are for people looking to enhance their skills. Uh, this is skills like Photoshop, this is skills like web development. Uh, 
the method is uh, uh, Knox will use a weekly learning sequences uh, composed of short videos interspread with interactive learning exercise in order to, to, to teach or to, 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 to bring across the educational content. There will be animations and pre-recorded uh, pre elucidations in order to make the, the, the educational material more interactive. And there will be immediate testings and practices after the lessons in order to test uh, knowledge, knowledge acquisitions. And also there will be online discussion forums for students on the platform so that they can discuss what they've learned in the lessons. Uh, the, the, our unique selling uh, points are that uh, the product is industry relevant and it's dynamic. If something industry changes today, we're able to change it immediately the next day. So tomorrow you'll be learning what is relevant for that day. Uh, and the price advantage, because we don't, there's no overheads. We're not paying for air conditioning. We're not paying for buildings. We're not paying liens for, for lease. We're paying for the education solely and enhancing its quality. So it comes out far cheaper than that of the existing tertiary institutions. And the third, the third USP is the server strategy. We're, using, uh, we are, we're looking to partner with existing educational institutions in order to have them as partners as opposed to competitors. We're going to use our, our, our educators or our, or our curriculum providers. Uh, we're going to treat them as clients as well, uh, so that we're going to have account managers for them, so, so make the, promise, uh, the, the process as seamless as possible. We're looking to enter into arrangements with ISPs in order to make uh, to lower data costs on the platform. Uh, we're looking to use a, a strong digital presence using uh, display ads, using search engine marketing, using web, using remarketing in order to make sure we drive as much traffic as we can to the platforms and using a story-based element of self-improvement to make sure that they're converted. Uh, uh, the team is composed of Tangi, Eben, and Ines. And, uh, uh, who are very qualified and very skilled and have before uh, gotten funding for an ad tech startup. So that allows us to be in a better position or positions us better to make this one a success. Uh, our financials, we're using a lean startup method, which means that we are doing the bulk of, our, of the work ourselves and trying to keep costs low. Uh, and uh, the courses are priced at... at, at, at uh, from 500 for skills-based courses uh, to as high as 1,500, and these on a per-month subscription basis. So it means that when you stretch out the payments, it also makes it more affordable as opposed to being required to, bake, to pay a, a registration fee at the beginning of the academic year of 8,000, which is usually unaffordable. Uh, and the courses are, are, are distributed into two-month courses, three-month courses, or 12-month courses as per the NQA requirements. Uh, because of the lean startup method that we're using, it means that we're looking to break even as early as the first year of operation. Uh, and what we have currently, we have an existing uh, fully functional uh, web platform. Uh, we have an existing business plan, which has been fully drafted and tested. We have a, a get-to-market strategy. We have a, 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 marketing uh, a digital marketing strategy. And we have a team that is ready, willing, committed, and capable of pushing, through, uh, pushing this across the line. Uh, what we need is, uh, we're looking for 150,000 for a 49% stake, uh, ideally in preferential or, 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 or debentures, in order to allow us to, to, to complete the content capturing stage, to allow us to, 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 to move towards deployment, and to allow us to do a soft launch, which will be a trial, trial based within the next three months. I thank you. Whew, okay. I know I'm leaving that other institution for this one. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Eben. I think we can go straight to the judges. Gerald? Um, hi, Eben. Thank you for your presentation. I actually have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. So um, the first one is, what is your marketing strategy? Could you just go a little bit more into detail with that? Mm -hmm. And the second one is, have you piloted um, or kind of had a prototype on and tested your innovation on the market and what has the feedback been? Okay, uh, uh, the, the marketing strategy is uh, like, like looking at the, at the, at the, at the course content, mm -hmm. it's directed at a particular market which is mostly tertiary and uh, early tertiary, like, like uh, from ages 21 to up to 35. These are usually your, your underskilled or people looking to improve their skills. Uh, so of course, because the platform is digital, the conversion platforms are digital, it allows us to, to base our entire marketing strategy on the digital platforms and only the using the traditional, method, the traditional methods to, to, to tell the stories and push people down the funnel. But all, all conversion will be done online using display ads, using search engine marketing, using our social media platforms in order to drive as much traffic as we can to the platforms. And we're gonna use, uh, piggyback, on the credibility of the institutions that we're partnering with to build on our credibility. Uh, so that's basically the crux of, of, of our marketing strategy or the marketing positioning. 
Uh, the second question was, uh, was, was the testing. Uh, what we're looking to do in six months, we're going to do the soft launch where we're going to put out three courses. One will be subsidized, two will be free. Two, two, will, be, two will be free. And it's through that where you test how the market responds to it, where you test uh, how much they're willing to pay, how much time they're spending online. And that allows you to frame your content that maybe it was a 30-minute segment, it wasn't working, so you have to break it down to a 20. So basically, you test, and it doesn't mean that once you test, it's done. It means that even after we do the full launch, which we hope to, to do next year, you continuously work to improve based on what the audience is feeding you. Thank you, Eben. Okay, lovely. Could we have Tanya next? Thanks, Eben, for your presentation. Uh, I'd love to know about your your partners, um, so one has the NFQA, sorry, if I'm NQA, um, mm -hmm. has there been an agreed upon sort of partnership in terms of this qualification meaning something on paper, number one, and how are you facing the challenges in terms of technological access? We all know that Namibia, you know, access to internet, um, you know, personal devices, laptops, is that something that the user would have in place already in order to access your, your course content? Okay, uh, the first one, the, the primary partners are existing educational institutions. And we've used that approach because their courses are already accredited. What we're doing is we're just transporting them onto the platform. Uh, in terms of creating our own courses, which will be NQA accredited, that is uh, during, during phase three. And it's only the, the, of the three categories of courses, only the, the, the one credit based, which requires NQA accreditation, and that's already accredited from the partners. The industry sourced one doesn't require NQA accreditation because it's, it's being taught by the employers for themselves. So when a person gets into the market with a qualification, the employer already recognizes that that qualification matches our needs. Uh, with regards to the challenges of, 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 of devices and internet connectivity, I think internet penetration is, is, is just about 50%. Uh, one, of, one, of, one, of the, one of the server strategies was, was trying to get partnerships with ISPs in order to lower the data cost for, for people accessing the, 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 the platform. But if you look at our, our, our key target segment, which is not primarily compromised of, 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 of how do I say it? Yeah, uh, young students who, who, who don't have an income. We're trying to target people who are underemployed, who are employed in jobs which they feel that they can do better, people who are looking to increase on their skills, and hence the flexibility, hence the convenience. So these people have some means of an income, so it is expected that uh, they should have a certain means to get the device, especially if you're going to have a means to pay for the, for, 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 for the course. But then both those means collated for a around 25% of what our current university course costs. So you're still falling way, 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 way below. So, so your, cost, your, cost, your cost is still falling way below what is currently being charged by the institutions. Thank you. Um, Esther? Good evening, Eben. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, well, I had a question. You mentioned that uh, nowadays education is not uh, relevant. I wanted to ask you what um, validates or legitimates uh, your uh, program over a regular one? And okay, uh, uh, the, the, the validation comes from using uh, industry experts. Uh, uh, like, for example, if we're going to teach an HR course, uh, instead of referring to a, a textbook written in 1960 or a professor who got his PhD in 1992, we're going to look at those, in addition, we're going to look at leading HR experts in the market and what they feel is relevant and what they feel is needed. And then you, 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 put, you bring that together and then you create a, a, a course that is high quality because it relies on the, on, the, on the basic premise, basic foundation, but it's also relevant to the needs of industry because it comes directly from the industry and that information is sourced uh, in real time. So it's relevant to the market today. And should the needs change, Next year, uh, the course can be easily updated and be relevant again next year and the year after. Mm. All right, thank you very much. Judges, are we satisfied? Okay, can we put our hands together for Eben? Thank you so much, Eben. Okay, um, moving on swiftly. I think I, I've heard all of these presentations, so I'm so eager and excited for all of you to hear them. Without any delay, I would like us to put our hands together for a very brilliant, a very innovative young woman, Ndilo Kelwantengwe, pitching autonomy. Can we put our hands together for her?
Okay, just just a moment for Dilo. Okay. Are we good? Okay. Is it on? Is it on? I hope it's can you hope you can hear me? Good evening to everyone. Good evening to the judges. My name is Ndilokelo Antengwe and welcome to a new era of work. What is the problem currently? The problem is that skills are very stagnant, skills do not grow. And there are scarcity of jobs in that people do not have jobs to have access to. And we need reliable short-term talent. Right? Enter autonomy. Autonomy is a web-based work facilitator and a networking platform. It will provide companies with access to vetted workers, and workers will earn an income through short-term employment. Imagine a platform where work is almost entirely decentralized, and individuals build their portfolio of skills to traverse across different industries. A platform that is created for people such as myself, the youth, people who need their skills to grow professionally in a short period of time. Autonomy can be just that and more. So with the evolution of work, we have always had 9 to 5, and it is currently still with us. And it has always been office-bound, and you would always have to find yourself climbing the corporate ladder. Sometimes you would find yourself in bondage. Enter autonomy, you can work anytime, you can traverse across different fields, and you don't need to climb a corporate ladder, you have your own ladder. Hence the autonomy to traverse these different industries. How does it work? A job seeker goes onto the platform, they create their profile, once they have now sifted through the different jobs available to them, they get hired. After they've completed the, the job, then they get paid through the platform, autonomy. The example job seeker, we are looking at the 50% 50, 50 people who have access to the internet, those ones that are part of the shared economy. By shared economy, we mean they also use other means of online platforms like Chomi Bytes, Uber, not Uber Eats, <laughs> Lifa, and perhaps even Cafe Nicolas. And so they are part of sh the shared economy. They have online banking. They have access to the internet. They own perhaps even a smart gadget or any kind of online device. And so how we pl plan to reach this market, the job seekers and the companies combined, is we will be using testimonials. We currently have a marketing ad that was supported by the Namibian Film Commission, where we have the different stories that will now be launched in our soft, in our soft launch phase coming October, November. We will be doing activations, social media, uh, 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 activations as well, and we'll be going to exhibitions and campuses where we will have the audience that we seek. Our revenue model consists of a double-sided marketplace. We will be charging 8% for every job that's been completed by the user or the job seeker. And for the companies, we are planning to do a free year free trial because we know, especially even the pandemic right now, economic harsh conditions for companies. So the one year free trial is where we, the companies will be able to register for free. So according to our very conservative estimates, autonomy is expected to have a healthy financial position in the next three years. In our first year of operations, we will not be charging the companies. If we have a minimum of 120 job seekers and workers on the platform, we'll be yielding at least 16,800, and this is without cost. We will be starting very lean. In our third year, we are looking at at least 3,300 combined job seekers and workers, in which we look at 200 workers per month on the platform and perhaps 50 companies registered every other month. This will then give us a yield of 1.9 million. So we are planning to pilot in Ventuk because we know that Namibia is not, the, the population is not that big. We want to start off very, very small and we want to fail and iterate in which we build the infrastructure and the systems in order for us to continue moving forward. And that is where we will start off as implementation ground. When we move into the other regions like South Africa, for example, 5% of the population alone would, would be 2.9 million. So this would be companies and workers combined. And that is where we also want to now begin to penetrate after we have scaled out where we will also be developing other kinds of innovation on the platform. Our competitors, Potentia, Infinity Recruitment, Elite Employment, and African staff personnel, all of them have the same thing in common. You go onto the platform, it's still the traditional model of, of employment, where you go and then they, they position you to another company where you have to wait for an interview, you have to submit your CV. Sometimes you don't even get an interview. And so they all have the same thing in common, which makes them effectively their own competitors. But enter autonomy with our unique selling point. You don't need to be 
uh, submitting CVs. As every job you complete, the platform updates it for you. Imagine all of these platforms. For example, we have launched Namibia, FNB as example companies that will show you where you'll be working, how much you'll be earning, and the location of the, of the job. It will be easy, job will be, works, work will be decentralized, and that is where our unique selling point lies. Our team, myself, Ndilo Kelwan Tengwe, I am the CEO and founder of Autonomy that was conceptualized in 2018 in Cape Town. And after that, I decided, let me come back and start from scratch in Namibia and enter then Tulia Makali, who is the Chief Technology Officer. He has a degree in Computer Technology and myself, Business Innovation and Computer Technology. And then we have our admin as well. I thank you. Thank you so much for your lovely presentation, Dilo. I think we can pass it over to the judges. Gerald? Um, hi, Ndilo. Uh, thank you for your presentation. So again, I have two questions for you. You said that you vet your workers beforehand. Can you maybe just explain briefly how you do that? And the second one is um, the company pays the worker on the platform itself. Um, how do you protect uh, a worker in case, the, in case the company doesn't pay them? Okay, thank you for that. I think I want to answer the, f the second question before I go into the first. So the way the platform works is almost the, the business model is like Airbnb. So once you go onto the platform, you have all of these different accommodations available. And once you then, as the visitor and the host, the visitor pays the money into an Airbnb account. So it will work the same as the companies. The companies will actually have to pay us that it, it signals that it's the payment for the worker. Once the worker is done, that's it, when they get paid. That's how we protect also the, the, the income of the worker because we know there are a lot of uh, labor issues with people not getting paid on time, etc. So we will be the ones that will be host, hold, holding the, the, the monies and then once the work has been completed, that's when we make the payment to the worker. Because it is short term, we'll be able to do that in